I'm Laura Douglas, president of Bristol Community College, and I want to welcome you to our National Offshore Wind Institute that we fondly call the NAWI. The NAWI will provide health and safety training such as Global Wind Organization, or GWO training, customized training for developers, OEMs, and supply chain, and a virtual training program all supporting the needs of the offshore wind sector. In front of me, the Industry Training Center will simulate real-world environments, preparing workers for challenging and dynamic in environments. For instance, the NAWI will have a deep water training pool for GWO sea survival and, a crew transfer, and crew transfer courses and a climbing tower simulator. So right in front of me is where our pool will be, and here we have towers and confined space training. And then as you look around the room at our photographs, you can see some of the other training uh, types of programs that we'll be having in, in this building. Bristol Nowy. Bristol's NAWI and its partner, MERS Training, will provide a critical part of the offshore wind sector's infrastructure and support career and educational pathways complemented by Bristol's Offshore Wind Technician Program. It's an associate degree program as well as our certificate. The offshore wind sector is poised to create thousands of job opportunities across a wide range of industries, and it is critical to ensure a robust workforce infrastructure to support the blue economy and offshore wind industry. That is why we are here today. I am joined by my higher ed colleagues to further solidify our long-term commitment to sharing resources and collaborating on the development of curriculum and programs that will ensure the development of a vibrant and sustainable regional industry. We are making history today. The signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between Connect, a consortium of six public colleges and universities in southeastern Massachusetts, will be the first time all six institutions have entered into a cross-collaborative agreement of this kind. I am very pleased to welcome Frederick Clark, Jr. Esquire, President of Bridgewater State University, Dr. John Cox, President of Cape Cod Community College, Rear Admiral, Admiral Francis X. McDonald, President of Massachusetts Maritime Academy, Ray De Pasquale, President, Massasoit Community College, and Dr. Mark Fuller, Chancellor, University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. We will hear from each leader in a moment. I would like to recognize our visionary leaders of the Board of Trustees and Foundation who are passionate about the mission of the college and great supporters of economic development for the region. I'd like to recognize our chair of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, Joan Medeiros. Welcome. We also welcome and thank our legislators for joining us today. Our keynote speaker will be Representative Patricia A. Haddad. We also have Senator Mark R. Pacheco and Representative Antonio Cabral, who will also make remarks. And we are also joined today by Representative Carol Doherty. Welcome. We also have some distinguished guests, representatives from Senator Montigny's office and Senator Ed Markey's office with us here today. So I want to welcome this wonderful team of supporters. Um, now, I would like to ask each of my colleagues to share with you how this partnership will benefit the region, and then we are going to sign the Memorandum of, understa of Understanding. So, uh, I'd like to ask Rear Admiral Francis McDonald to come to the podium. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. It's an honor to be here today. Uh, I have a couple quick ones to, uh, to get some thank yous out. First, you really have to thank the legislature uh, in this great commonwealth for having the vision to pull this together, and in particular, the legislators that are in the room and with us today. So on behalf of the entire Southeastern uh, communities, thank you for your work. I also want to thank the Baker-Polito administration. 
uh, the support that they have given this new initiative in offshore wind and to tie it to something as important as uh, STEM Week, STEM Awareness Week, has been really, really very helpful and instrumental in uh, launching the success of the programs that we have underway. And now from Massachusetts Maritime Academy, we have done that maritime thing for well over 100 years, but we've also done that energy thing, producing ship engineers first and then power plant and energy engineers driving electrons throughout the Commonwealth and the nation. This offshore wind is really the nexus of those two industries, and we feel like we are well positioned to, uh, to really serve the Commonwealth in that regard. And in fact, we have stood up training back, uh, begun back in 2019. We have been working with the unions and getting them through the training, and we are upwards of a couple hundred people that have already been trained to be out in the workforce uh, in, support of, uh, in support of this initiative. So it's really, really, truly, truly stunning. I got to tell you, though, I'm honored to be here today to now upscale, if you will, all the work that's going on and to be here with the Connect partners from UMass Dartmouth, from Bridgewater State University, from Bristol Community College, from Massasoit Community College, and Cape Cod Community College. And while we've worked together on a ton of initiatives, around teacher training and around diversity in our schools. This does stand as something, as President Douglas talked about, that is, that is new and really, really one of a kind. And the piece of it really stands two, two big, big hits. One is it stands as a force multiplier. So instead of any one institution kind of trying to run with this little corner of the industry, by tying these institutions together, we have expertise that are going to hit the K through 12 world, and that's important because we have to get young people excited about these jobs, especially young people from our gateway cities. Uh, it's going to be a game changer for folks as you look at the associate level and certificate programs that President Douglas mentioned. You look at what you can do to provide for a family with that ticket punched, and you can make a pretty darn good living at that level. Likewise, if you pursue your baccalaureate degree, or through some of what UMass is doing on the research side, masters and beyond, uh, we're talking about really impacting the entire spectrum of people from grade school all the way up to retraining underemployed or unemployed workers to take advantage of this great opportunity. The other big piece of it is that this will act as an engine of social mobility. And that's really where the rubber meets the road. That's uh, uh, an important part of all of our undertakings as a public institution in the Commonwealth. And when we look at those opportunities, especially to drive diversity in this industry, it's a game changer for families. And if we look generally at the maritime industry and generally at the power plant industry, it is mostly white and mostly male. And we have a commitment from all of these institutions to take what we're doing to reach deep into the communities and to get connected to provide social mobility for our friends and neighbors from these gateway towns. So I got to tell you, um, I am just thrilled to be a part of it. I think the, uh, the, the, the real range of this thing is limitless, and I am... Uh, I am really, really, really proud of the entire Connect Group uh, and under President uh, Douglas's leadership. So thank you very much. Happy to be here. Well, good morning. Good morning. All right. And uh, really, a big Cape Cod thanks for my colleagues here today as our region's colleges and universities join in partnership. If you look at the national landscape of higher education, it's fairly uncommon for so many regional institutions to literally lock arms and move in one direction with such commitment and unity. It's been inspiring to work with all of you in tandem with our dedicated legislators and Vineyard Wind to acknowledge the immense positive impact offshore wind will have for the communities we serve and to do our part in making this project a reality and successful. 
At Cape Cod Community College, STEM is our present and it's our future. Offshore wind is unquestionably a centerpiece for the blue economy that will drive our region into the future. Over the past few years, largely through our Sustainable Energy Certificate Program and Offshore Wind 101, classes are brought directly to the members of our community and our soon-to-be high school graduates. We've seen their interest and understanding of what offshore wind means to them. In addition, we're expanding our power plant education in our aviation maintenance technology program to include increased turbine focus. Through our cybersecurity, business, and applied economics of coastal and ocean environments, we intend to support education in the administrative and back office operations while also recognizing the long-term prospects relating to hospitality and tourism education. As we agree on this partnership, further embracing sustainability and renewable energy, this is also about equity and access to economic opportunities, in part through the education that we provide. With this alignment of our colleges and universities, we're meeting our region's workforce education needs, supporting offshore wind, the blue economy, and STEM, while creating a trajectory for career success and growth within our region. So many people are fueled by a passion for STEM, but they end up leaving the region, and in sometimes, in many cases, they leave the state to find and build careers that will support them and their families. Offshore wind and the entirety of the blue economy represent very different futures for our workforce and opportunities for our region. This project and this partnership comes at the same time that our new Frank and Maureen Wilkins Science and Engineering Center, with the help of the legislature in getting us our capital funding, is coming to fruition. We'll be opening the doors as the Center of STEM Education on the Cape in fall of 2022. Truly, this is a transformative moment for our students and our communities across southeastern Massachusetts. And we're deeply thankful to be a part of it and for all your support. Thank you. Are you tired of the speeches yet? <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. It's great to be with you today uh, to celebrate the expansion of this incredibly valuable partnership. I first want to thank my fellow leaders of the Connect Institutions for ensuring that all of the institutions in our region are working together to develop the workforce that the South Coast needs, especially in rapidly emerging industries like offshore wind. I also want to thank all of our elected officials here today for their support of UMass Dartmouth, of Connect, and this wonderful opportunity the South Coast has to strengthen our position as a leader in offshore wind, clean energy, and the blue economy. A complex industry like offshore wind needs thoughtful, sustained efforts and close partnerships across academia, business, and government to be successful. Here on the South Coast, the Connect Consortium is well positioned to support the Commonwealth's offshore wind initiatives and to become a national center for excellence. As a region's only research university, UMass Dartmouth is proud of the unique contributions we can make to this partnership. Our scholars and scientists are national leaders in fields crucial to offshore wind development, including understanding the environmental impacts and improving key technologies like underwater acoustics and unmanned underwater vehicles. To date, UMass Dartmouth has received $8.1 in research funding related to offshore wind, and we will continue to build on this momentum. We also have nearly a dozen existing degree and certificate programs that are meeting demonstrated offshore wind workforce needs, including graduates with high-level planning, engineering, management, and administrative skills. 
When we work together, we can achieve great things. And I look forward to seeing all that we accomplish together. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Look, everybody's so quiet. We want to wake you up. Good morning. It, it truly is a pleasure to be here. I'm the new president of Massasoit Community College, Rady Pasquale, and it's really a pleasure to be here today. And, and two months in, back in the state, I, I worked at Springfield Tech for a long time and Middlesex Community College as well. And, and most recently, it was in the SUNY system, and then prior to that, in Rhode Island. In Rhode Island, we got to see one of the most magnificent offshore wind projects off of Block Island. And today, you can already see the results of that and what it's done for energy. So this project, as it comes together, is, is, is really extraordinary. Uh, Laura, I, I can't thank you enough as the president of Bristol for bringing us together. Um, everyone has said it. Everyone has said it. But, but let me tell you how unique this is. These colleges, all of us working together the way we are, it doesn't happen this way. It just doesn't across the country. This is extraordinarily, as, as Laura said, an historic day of bringing together a group of presidents from very different colleges, not to compete against each, each other, but to work together to make our state and our region stronger. And this program will do exactly that. And at Massasoit, we're, we're very proud to be part of it, simply because we're, we're gonna be part of the supply chain resources that today we all know are missing. And that's all we hear about every day. The supply chain is causing prices to go up, is causing delays across the country. So as you look at this team coming together, and you talk about, you got the universities, the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth, one of the best around, and I'm biased because my stepson goes there. <laughs> Bridgewater State, one of the finest presidents I've met and, and had a wonderful tour of that campus just recently. Cape Cod Community College, part of an extraordinarily good system. The Mass Maritime Academy, one of the most unique academies in the country, doing extraordinary things. And Bristol Community College, which I've known so well, and an outstanding president who continues to do extraordinary things. As a team, and as Massasoit only sits in Brockton, a wonderful city, the city of champions, as we talk about. We also sit in Canton, with extraordinary programs like DIESO and veterinary technology, and you begin to think about all the ways that we can work together, and we're in Middleborough. And so for this partnership today, we're very excited to be part of it. As a new president, I can't think of a better way to start a new presidency than to work with my colleagues in a very unique way of bringing new jobs, new energy, as they say. And the extraordinary pieces after this are there's lots of other pieces that are going to make clean energy better in our state. There's a real commitment here. Our state legislators, our representatives, our senators that are here today deserve an extraordinarily huge round of applause. I've worked in other states. I say this to you because I've worked in other states in the commitment that I've seen from the state legislators, from the governor all the way down, is extraordinary. And I don't say that lightly. The support for higher education is second to none. I'm extraordinarily proud to be here today as part of this consortium. You know, you think about Connect for Win. You've got colleges today connecting together to make our state and our region stronger. On behalf of Massasoit Community College, we're extraordinarily proud. Thank you for inviting us. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be back in Massachusetts and be part of this extraordinary experience that we're all about to see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Fred Clark, the president of Bridgewater State University, and I want to um, just thank my colleagues, thank all of you for coming together this morning. I'm joined today by the Dean of our College of Business, Dr. Janine Davis-Street, and the partnership uh, will be with, the, with, the, with that college. And our special assistant to the President, former State Senator Vinny DiMacito in the back is also here as well. Our contribution to this effort will focus mostly on logistics and supply chain also, and we're very proud to be a part of this effort. I want to also thank our legislators. We have a truly powerful and remarkable team of legislators, and we all want to thank them for their friendship and for their continuing relentless support. 
The other team I wanted to talk about is the Connect Partnership. These six institutions are a true team, and we understand that we're stronger if we work together, that we're more impactful whenever we work as a team. It reminds me of the Red Sox. We win as a team because no one person or no one institution can solve the issues in southeastern Massachusetts. Each one of us has to play a role. We have to step up to overcome whatever the workforce challenges or obstacles are, and we have to do that to win for Massachusetts. Thanks to our player coach, Laura Douglas, the president of Bristol Community College, today we hit a grand slam of impact in, in, in uh, addressing the needs of the, the wind industry here in Massachusetts. But on other fields of play, it's important to note that we also work together to address shortages of diverse teachers just yesterday with Rep. Carol Doherty and testimony that we all offered. We've joined forces in building cybersecurity capacity in this region or in helping to create photonics engineering, engineering pathways for our students or address the growing needs of the aviation industry. Whatever we do together, we're working to open doors of opportunity for the students that we are so privileged to serve. So what we've learned from our teamwork, today's a demonstration of it, is that the future of higher education in Massachusetts is collaboration. No group collaborates more effectively than the Connect Partnership, and I'm very proud that Bridgewater State University is a part of it. Thank you so much. this memorandum of understanding. We'll have one si signing page and pass it along. So here we go. Pen works. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jennifer Menard, and thank you to all of you. I'm the, that was wonderful, and um, just make sure this MOU goes right here. Um, my, good morning. My name is Jennifer Menard. I'm the Vice President of Economic and Business Development, and I also oversee the National Offshore Wind Institute. Today, I have the opportunity to introduce a friend and mentor and former teacher, uh, our keynote speaker, Representative Patricia Haddad. Patricia Haddad has been for the last 20 years the most an amazing leader for the 5th Bristol District and for the entire region. Her leadership is well known across the state, but her work on renewable energy and specifically offshore wind is legendary. Patricia Haddad was a force, saying it nicely, in the Massachusetts legislature pushing not just for renewable energy in the Commonwealth, but to ensure that residents and businesses in the community were able to share in the economic impacts of this sector. Representative Haddad's work and leadership to get the act relative to energy diversity signed and passed put Massachusetts on the offshore wind map and made all of this possible today. And I have the pleasure of welcoming up Representative Haddad, thank you. Thank you so much. 
for being here. I have to take a really deep breath first to say thank you. Thank you to the um, gentlemen and gracious lady who are beside me for working so hard to put this together. Thank you to two gentlemen who were sitting in front of me because they were probably only a couple, two of a couple of people who didn't make fun of this. When this began, we were fighting off the stigma of I, Cape Wind <clears throat> because it wasn't what people thought it was going to be. So I remember a night way back in 2014 when the previous uh, administration wanted to give us a pilot program and wanted us to just take, you know, take your time. What you're saying is way too big and there's, it's going to be too expensive. And, it's, and there were all these negative vibes. And we fought that off with Tony Cabral, Mark Pacheco, and a number of other people. So that in 2014, when we shut down the governor, it became, oops, um, now what do we do? Uh, so it was how I spent my summer vacation. Tony and I sitting in the little library in Somerset, Massachusetts. And now that I think back, it was, oh my God, we're inviting these very important people to come to us and to share their knowledge. And they came willingly, literally from all over the world. They came willingly because they knew that the United States was on the cusp of changing, really changing what energy was going to be. And so there we sat and listened and listened and listened, and it generated, and this has always been the joke, it literally generated three, three inch, three ring binders of people who shared what their vision and what they had been doing in offshore wind. And so when the new administration came in, I would go around meeting with people and presenting them with these three binders and people would be, she's got to be kidding. But it was proof. It was proof that what we saw, the few of us who saw what wind energy could be, was contained in this material. And so we went forward and, and many, 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 many times people told us we were crazy. And I can remember the speaker just holding his head and going, you're not going to embarrass me, are you? You're not going to embarrass me. And I kept saying, no, this is, this is the future. This is really the future. And so thankfully, that bill passed. But it was very interesting because at the bill signing, the governor looked at me and he said, you know, this is good, but why don't we make a bet that hydro is going to come first? I should have taken that bet. I would have made real money. But I just smiled and I said, well, <clears throat> I don't think you're correct. And I was right, which is like, you know, an amazing thing. But in all of the time that we had meetings and we talked to people and we were constantly selling this. I mean, this was a, an amazing marketing job. People like Jen uh, Menard who we dragged, dragged us to places and we dragged her to places to make sure that she could say, bring real knowledge because she's been all over the world looking at um, offshore wind. And we went, we went to Denmark, we went to England so that we could see the possibilities. And I remember being in England with um, Senator Rodericks and we went into one of these training facilities. Now, if you know me, you know I'm always in high heels. And uh, so they, we, they were showing us around and they said, well, would you like to see what it's going to be like to be trained? So we said, sure, and, cl and went to the top of something and we're told that we were going to now go into a smokehouse and learn what it was going to be like to be unable to see and to safely get out of something in my high heels. Well, it was amazing, it was disorienting, it was scary, 
But in those days, I could see what could be. What could be in training? What could be in our area? What could make amazing changes? As the Admiral said, real changes to people's lives because these are really good jobs. And there's all kinds of jobs, from blue collar to you know, um, extremely sophisticated academic jobs. But they're jobs. And so as we talked about this bill, we talked about it starting a new industry and creating jobs and making a new reality for the South Coast because we were on the, kind of on the upswing from the big recession, <clears throat> but we weren't coming back as quickly as other people. So it became, every time I dared to think about, you know, what could be, and I could think that maybe this could happen, I didn't dare hope until just recently. And that hope and that dream is coming true. It's coming true here. It's coming true among my colleagues who now don't laugh at us anymore and want to know how soon we're going to be um, proposing more wind. And it's coming true because people are getting jobs. And that has to be one of the most important things we do. You know, it's, the, the environment is really, really important. And um, I joke that I used to be the uh, queen of wind, I mean, queen of uh, coal, which was very upsetting to many um, environmentalists. And now I'm the witch of wind because I just won't give it up. You know, it, this is going to happen and it's going to happen. And, you know, I, when I retire, my husband is getting me a um, one nine hundred dial a nag because he's watched me like get really tense. I'm, I'd be, I'll be on phone calls and he'll look at me and he can see that it's somebody who's not listening to why wind is so important. And I get off the phone and he said, when are you going to get tired of those people? Can't get tired of them until they believe to. And so I have been the recipient of some great, great help. First, I'll go way, way back to when I graduated from college, which was... <laughs> a long time ago, but I went to Bridgewater, and Bridgewater taught me not to give up, and taught me to do, to push and push and push. And sometimes I'm a pushy broad, but that's the only way things get done. And then as we came along, there were so many people who gave me their expertise and told me about how they had done it, how they had worked wind in. So this is not something that I've done. It's something that I've been allowed to be part of. And I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to Senator Pacheco, to my good friend, um, Chairman Cabral, to our new colleague who has thrown herself into this 100%, Representative da uh, Darty, and to all our colleagues, and now to our new speaker, who really understands the importance of what we're doing, who really understands that jobs are central to this process, and who really understands that we need competition. And we will get competition when we allow and encourage all of the developers to bid, because then this place is going to be filled up. And all of our schools are going to be filled up. And all of our kids are going to see that these jobs can be theirs. And it's from going back a long time ago when a couple of people that um, I will always admire said, just forget about Cape Wind. We have an idea and we have a process that is going to change everything, everything. And it has, and it will continue to. And so I just want to thank you for coming to your coming together. It is true. Our, um, our higher ed institutions work together fantastically. I want to thank my colleagues because without them, this is not a one man job or a one woman job. This is bringing people together and having relationships. And I've had amazing help from my colleagues and everybody that's in this room. 
gave me a little something, either the, the will to go on, the ability to just say to people who were saying, this is never going to happen in one session. And I kept saying, don't tell me that. Because if I think for one minute that it can't happen, I may relax. So everybody gave me the courage to be that, um, that uh, um, obnoxious broad that just nagged and nagged until she got her way. So thank you for continuing this process because it has to have a future. It has to go on long after I hang up the high heels. And it has to go on because it's necessary for all of us, from our children to our old people, because we're always going to want more power, the, the right kind of power, the kind that um, heats our homes, lights our way, and pretty soon drives us around. So thank you so very much for even allowing me to be here to be part of this process. It's been an amazing run, and um, we have a bright, bright future ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Haddad, and thank you for your passion and your advocacy. And uh, let's keep going, even with our high heels. <laughs> Next, I'd like to welcome Senator Pacheco to the podium. Senator Pacheco has been an avid uh, supporter of renewable energy and also a great advocate for offshore wind. Thank you, Senator Pacheco, for sharing some words. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam President, and uh, to all the presidents, I mean, this is, I, get, I get to uh, thank a whole bunch of presidents um, this morning. To my uh, colleagues in the legislature, certainly, to Representative Haddad, uh, the lead uh, in the House of Representatives over the last few years relative uh, to offshore wind, working with uh, Tony Cabral, who's been filing offshore wind legislation for a number of years uh, before we finally had a piece that that passed. It's great to see my colleague Carol Doherty here, is, who's a big supporter of renewable energy uh, technology. Uh, I want to say I'm extremely pleased to be celebrating STEM Week with uh, the expansion of the existing Connect for Wind. Uh, agreement, <clears throat> a coalition that now includes uh, all the institutions that we have heard from, and I won't repeat them, but I, I thank them all very much for coming together, in particular in a powerful way around this issue. Uh, the central goal of uniting these excellent academic institutions is to advance a collaborative effort to provide teaching, training, research, on offshore wind and the blue economy. As a lead Senate sponsor of offshore wind, uh, and as one of the conferees that sat down and worked that piece of legislation through uh, to its conclusion back in 2016, and Way back before that, the legislation, a proud author of the legislation in 2008 that made sure that we would bring greenhouse gas emissions down in the Commonwealth, the Global Warming Solutions Act, which ended up being years later one of the overriding reasons why we had to find other renewable sources of energy to power our economy. I am, I am so pleased about where we are today. Uh, through the Connect for Win Collaborative, uh, all of the colleges and universities will be able to help students as well as our local communities, seize upon the true potential this new industry holds, not only for southeastern Massachusetts, but for the rest of America. We're going to lead the country 
We are leading the country in this effort right now. Because no, make, make no mistake about it, when you, it comes to offshore wind, Massachusetts is open for business and ready to embrace the future. According to the latest report by the American Academy of uh, the American Wind Energy Association, the offshore wind industry is set to invest between 28 and 57 billion in U.S. economy between now and 2030. Between now and 2030. And by 2025, offshore wind development, construction, and operations will also support 19 to 45,000 new jobs, with 45 to 83,000 jobs expected by 2030. Well, this is excellent news for our region and for our partners in higher education here today. It also highlights one of the most critical aspects of this new collaborative. It's timing. It couldn't be better timed to come together to move forward for what we want to do together. In fact, the figures I just mentioned, 28 to 57 billion and 45 to 83,000 jobs, um, are telling indicators of the difference between minimal baseline effort or full potential. It depends upon what we put into it in terms of what we will get out of it. But as we in the Commonwealth continue to take important steps to advance our clean energy economy, other states have caught up. They're catching on to win. Uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, all have entered into regional offshore wind market um, and robust uh, procurement plans themselves. Uh, the current uh, Biden administration has also begun to put forth genuine federal leadership on renewable development. As we can remember, uh, under the previous administration, uh, we were held up for a full four years uh, before we now have got the support with the, uh, with the federal government. In March, the Biden-Harris administration pledged to deploy at least 30 gigawatts of domestic offshore wind by 2030. And in July, the Department of Interior announced plans for new offshore wind development on the outer continental shelf off the coast of New York and New Jersey. And just last week, the Secretary of the Interior announced the administration's plans to explore the potential of seven new offshore wind lease sales in the Gulf of Maine, Central Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, offshore of the Carolinas, California, and Oregon. This is phenomenal news for the offshore wind industry here in southeastern Massachusetts, both here in the Commonwealth as a whole, uh, these newly announced plans represent tremendous opportunity, but one that must be acted upon urgently. Urgently. We at the state level, we should be at the table right now with another conference committee moving forward to put out the next phase of tranches for offshore wind. We should be doing that before the end of this year. So as my colleagues and I in the legislature continue to advance policies designed to, ex to expand our statewide approach to maximizing the economic potential of offshore wind here in the Commonwealth, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the higher education institutions here today for their meaningful commitment to a collaborative effort to embrace offshore wind. In particular, make no mistake, the teaching, training, research provided as part of this program is critical. It's a critical factor to winning on win. It's critical. By 2025, investment in the U.S. offshore wind industry 
is expected to deliver 5.5 to 14.2 billion in economic output every year, with annual project projections of 12.5 to 25.4 billion by 2030. Think about those numbers. As the offshore workforce supply chain continues to expand and evolve, collaboration will be extremely important. Uh, I uh, want to conclude uh, by saying that the new industry, as it evolves, so too will the entire clean energy sector. So while it's so important to talk about wind today, let us not forget about the emerging technologies in training, in everything else that's happening to support a wind industry. Battery storage, other technologies, geothermal, clean energy relative to solar, electric vehicles, clean, uh, clean energy transportation, the built environment, energy efficiency. Uh, all of these areas are part of what hap has to happen in our region as well uh, to uh, really open the door for an economic future that we are on the cusp of. We're living in an extraordinary time right now. And as educators, what you do every day is touch the future. Every day, you're so lucky to be in a place that actually is able to touch the future. Now on the cusp of a sustainability revolution, never has that statement been more true than it is today. Uh, I sincerely appreciate your leadership and your sincere commitment to seizing the benefits of offshore wind, and I look forward to celebrating your ongoing role in the next chapters of our Commonwealth's clean energy future. I provided earlier before the program to the Executive uh, Director for Connect an article I brought with me from, as Pat would say, back in the day, a few years ago, when Bruce Mole from Commonwealth Magazine was sitting in the audience in Gardner Auditorium. And he documented a lot of what Pat, Representative Haddad, was talking about. When everyone wasn't necessarily on board with where we are right now, including, and I kid him, so if, if we have somebody from the administration here, welcome, including the present governor back in the day. Testimony that we provided to make sure that we would put forth offshore wind as part of the diversity of renewable energy technologies. And the article I gave um, was to be copied and given to all the presidents so that, because there are a lot of presidents that are sitting here today that weren't here back then. So I think with a good education program, we always have to start with a history, you know? and make sure that everybody is brought up to speed as to what is and what is happening now. I can remember being in that uh, governor's office when I was invited after that hearing, when I challenged the administration on their numbers. And to the governor's credit, he invited me to his office after that and wanted to know about the numbers I was talking about in Europe, in Denmark, 
in Norway, in the UK, in some of those places I had visited to actually see. Went on a trip with Representative Haddad uh, to, to Denmark, out to Scotland, to other, other places in the world to, to actually see what was taking place on the ground. And I knew that the numbers that were being talked about here were not correct. And so some of those times when we get, when we get uh, criticized as legislators for going in a junket, sometimes they pay off. Because you bring up back some real world information. And believe it or not, the governor took copious notes and he checked it out and he changed his mind. Amazing. He changed his mind. How often does that happen, <laughs> you know, in politics these days? He did the right thing. I think we need to do much more. Your leadership will help us do that together. And as a result of that, we will have thousands and thousands of people that will have a new future because of what you've put together here today and what we've tried to do in the legislature to make those opportunities available. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pacheco, for those thoughtful remarks and also for your leadership. Next, I'd like to invite Representative Antonio Cabral to the podium. Antonio Cabral has an amazing uh, thumb on the pulse of everything here in New Bedford. Uh, he also has been an extreme visionary when it comes to offshore wind in the great city of New Bedford. He's also a proud Bristol Community College alum and has been very supportive not only of the Offshore Wind Institute, the NAWI, but also our campus here in New Bedford. Representative Cabral. Oh, good morning. <clears throat> Boy, good morning. I'm the last speech, okay? <laughs> it's like before lunch. No. <laughs> um, but let me uh, first begin by thanking uh, the president, president from BCC, Madam President, and all the other presidents. Uh, yes, I am an alumni of BCC and UMass Dartmouth. Uh, so welcome all of you, uh, and let me start by welcoming all of you to New Bedford. Uh, and let me tell you, the people that I serve in New Bedford are absolutely delighted uh, and happy with this MOU. It's a great beginning, it's a great start for all of us to really move in the right direction when it comes to this industry. And I, I'm going to, I have some prepared remarks which I will but I want to thank Representative Haddad. I remember that summer and that fall in Somerset, the two of us, I, you know how many people we met with? And then we changed, at the end, we changed that, those meetings for a few of them at the State House, in your office, actually, uh, with some other folks. And uh, here we are, right? Great amount of work. I didn't know it was three ring binders, you know? <laughs> God. God bless. Uh, but, you know, in order for me to, <clears throat> I keep telling my staff they gotta do this huge font. Um, <clears throat> and, and they don't, they forget sometimes. So I have to use my reading glasses <laughs> to do this. And then I'm gonna, after my, I'm gonna close with a very short personal story after, which has tremendous connection to what we're doing here to, today. And we'll, at the same time, we'll honor a little bit of my dad's work. Anyway, well, thank you for giving me the, uh, giving me the opportunity to speak today. I really appreciate that. Wind power has often fueled advances forward 
for society. Wind helped us grind grain into flour and connect peoples from around the, the globe. Now it has the potential of freeing us from the environmental harm caused by burning fossil fuels. Anyone who works the sea understands and respects the power of the wind and the potential of harnessing the, that energy. We here in New Bedford have been talking about offshore wind for a long time, and to see it finally come together is immensely gratifying. Realizing the full benefit of offshore wind requires the commitment and the cooperation of many different stakeholders. New Bedford, the developers, the state, the legislature, the institutions of higher education, and of course, the local workers who will be the, black, the backbone of these projects. We all are in this together. And that partnership is what brings us here today. We have the New Bedford Commerce Terminal ready and waiting. We have signed and approved wind projects that will have the ability to generate cleaner energy, electricity in particular, for more than 400,000 homes and businesses in Massachusetts. Produce over 3,000 jobs. Reduce costs for Massachusetts ratepayers by $1.4 billion. Generate an economic impact of potentially 800 million and eliminate 1.68 million metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually. That's just what's been procured. Imagine what's coming. We have, we have a project labor agreements that will ensure the future of offshore wind will work for working people, in which we can serve as a model for, for how business and labor, when they work together, can build a sustainable future for all of us. We have a legislature interested in maintaining our, co our competitive edge and supporting the communities that will be most impacted. We have increased our wind solicitation levels and shortened the length between procurements and are working on our third bid process now. The speaker, the governor, seem committed to increasing the economic development potential of offshore wind but I want to see us outpace New York, New Jersey, and get to 10,000 megawatts of wind power by 2035. I think we can do it with your help. Offshore wind represents a unique generational opportunity for New Bedford and the South Coast to lead the development of this new industry, but to capitalize on its full potential we need a trained and skilled workforce to match, as you can see, BCC and the National Offshore Wind Institute have taken on this challenge. But they are not alone. UMass Dartmouth, Bridgewater State, Massasoit, and Cape Cod Community College and Mass, and Mass Maritime Academy, you have all understood the importance role, the important role your institutions can play in economic prosperity in our region. The offshore wind industry will need workers covering a wide range of skill sets. Engineers, researchers, welders, electricians, meteorologists, construction workers, marine scientists, community liaisons, boat captains, to name just a few. Offshore wind has tremendous potential to create new clean energy jobs, but it is important that access to these jobs be equitable and inclusive. That is why this partnership of public higher education institutions is so vital, especially for the South Coast and the Commonwealth, where so many of us begin our education at the local community college and slowly work our way up. We applaud your commitment of working together to sharing your resources and providing a cohesive educational framework that will make our region the offshore wind research and work hub that we deserve to be. 
the training programs offered by your institutions will be a critical pathway for workers throughout the Commonwealth in this nation to participate in this new American industry. Higher Ed is going to lay the foundations upon which our blue economy will rest. The work begins with you. Let me, let me uh, conclude with a little personal story and really has to do more with my father than myself. Uh, my father was, I believe, uh, the best mechanic I ever met. A diesel specialist, by the way, as well, in addition to that. And a battery rebuilder. He used to rebuild auto batteries, believe it or not. We lived in this little island in the middle of the Atlantic called the island of Pico in the Azores. And one of his best friends was, a, uh, was the priest from one of the small towns on the, in the island uh, that was part of that region of the island. And that particular town did not have electricity. And the town that we lived had electricity only from sunset until midnight. Imagine that, huh? One of the goals of that priest was to have or that pastor, if you want to call him pastor or reverend, uh, or father, as I usually used to call him, he's a Catholic priest, um, was to have some electricity in his parish in the rectory. So my dad went about doing that for him with wind power. This is a true story, by the way. He built a, a wind turbine, we would call it turbine, but it's really more like a farmer's wind a mill. And he had, he put together uh, a series of 12 volt batteries in the basement. Um, and then had to make the, the change from 12 volts to 100, to 220 volts, which is the, the current used in Europe. And there we go. When there is no wind, what used to get the lights on? The batteries. 12 volt batteries. And, and he used the batteries as, as uh, um, recycled batteries because he used to uh, do that for auto, the automotive um, batteries that we used to have on the little island. So I was a little kid I don't know how tall I was, but I was not very tall yet. I witnessed this. So as you can see, the connection in my passion for, uh, for offshore wind. Um, and I usually tell this story. I used to tell the story years ago when people didn't believe it, that you actually could do that, right? Uh, especially storage electricity on batteries then trans transform from a 12 volt batteries, right? To 220 current. Amazing. It would be nice to have my dad here today, right? He would be amazed. But he would be right that it could be done. He did it in a small, very, very small scale. Uh, but today, here we are uh, in, in a whole so-called new industry. Wind is uh, that throughout history has been very important for, uh, for this, all of us, be today or 500 years ago or, 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 or even beyond that. Well, that's the story that I wanted to finish with. Uh, this is probably the biggest audience I've told the story to. <laughs> Usually in the small conversations that I tell people that, because sometimes you, when you tell people that story, they start scratching their head, really? Yeah, that is because they didn't believe this is how it would work, right? So thank you again, and welcome to New Bedford again. Well, thank you, uh, Representative Haddad and Senator Pacheco and Representative Cabral for sharing your stories, the history, 
and also connecting us to the past uh, in the island of Pico with that wonderful story about your dad. Really lovely. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. This concludes our program, and we are just very, very grateful for all of your support, and we are very excited about the future of offshore wind and what it will do for our region. Thank you again for coming to the NAWI.